welcome back to my channel my name is Jess and this is a patron choice video so I'm going to be beveraging <laughs> while I'm reading five star reviews of books I hated so this is my third glass it's totally fine it's a Monday I don't have anywhere to be tomorrow and so I chose three books and I think on average, I'll probably look at three reviews. I've kind of like browsed and I'm like, oh, okay, there's some good reviews here for these books. They are very popular ones because of course that would make it fun. And so, I mean, there's really nothing else to say, but let's get to it. So the first one that I want to do is a recent read and it's The Love Hypothesis. This book was garbage. I thought it was freaking shallow, hollow mess. And I, it started as fanfic and I think it's a disgrace to fanfic because there's some good fucking fanfic out there. And this should have just been kept in the drafts. And everyone loves this book. So the first freaking rating I see, sorry Jess, it's all love, but I did not like, no, I gave it two stars. I hated it. Two stars and, and lower. I hate the book. So these are five star reviews. Jessica said, um, this was amazing. Was it? No, it wasn't. Ooh, why am I fun? I was definitely scared to start this because of the hype, but this was Grumpy Hero Fake Dating Perfection. That's a strong word. And it's in all caps. I was obsessed with this romance from the moment that Olive kisses Adam's in front. Olive kisses Adam in front of her best friend. I loved how Adam was this grump who took his job seriously and didn't care if anyone liked him. He slowly opened up to Olive. And I love how they slowly fell for each other. Did they? This is definitely a slow burn, but I ate every moment up. I also love how this was about a woman in academia and all the obstacles women go through. It was hard to read at times near the end because of how Olive was treated just because she was a woman in a male dominated industry. I was worried she wouldn't open up to Adam, but of course it all worked out in the end. Adam was definitely my favorite and I am literally obsessed with him now. We did not read the same book. This Adam has no personality. Neither does Olive. Actually, her personality is, I'm so quirky. Uh -huh, watch me trip over my feet and not eat a well-balanced diet. Terrible. I hated it. She said, perfection. You're lying. Um, she was obsessed with this romance from the moment Olive kisses Adam. I thought that was terrible. I went with it, though. But she mistakenly was just looking for someone to kiss. And oh, no. She kisses the grumpy professor, like, whatever. It was terrible. So he slowly opened up. The book ain't that long. It wasn't that slow burn. We just really, can we also mention his name is Adam? This is what? Kylo and whatever girls fanfic, Adam Driver, Adam. Get over yourself, Allie Hazelwood. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, Aaron, oh my God, I love this book so, so much. What's wrong with you? Another one. It gave what it was supposed to give and 10 times more. Do you know what that phrase means? Because I, you just use it incorrectly. This shit is a literary, literary, literary masterpiece. Flawless, perfection, excellent, splendid, and all above, and above all epic. A literary masterpiece? These characters have bewitched me body, mind, soul. These bad bitch scientists had me acting all submissive and breedable. All of pumpkin spice loving bad bitch. Where was she a bad bitch? I'm was so inspiring and all around an enjoyable main character to read about. This book proves Anyone, especially nerdy girls like me and Olive, can girl boss, gatekeep, and gaslight. Is this, is this, re is this review trolling me? I'm so fucking done, but it says five stars. 
she's a bad bitch that deserves the world but i'm also jealous of her because she has adam like um sharing is caring selfish scientist anyways adam this mfing daddy had me screaming clutching my pearls and aggressively ripping my shirt off i fucking love this strong needle phobic six foot something king he's a fucking thought y'all don't even fight what is this is this review real this isn't real this this can't be real he had my legs fucking divorced in chapter 16. Oh, the chapter where he says he puts her entire boob in his mouth. If that's what's divorcing your legs, is that what really got you going? The plot and writing were excellent, was it? Yes, this is fiction, but it's written so realistically, you know? I don't. It ain't fabricated. It is. The most the emotions were raw. There were none. My heart was swelling for these characters. Mine was ice cold. Bruv, why did I read this so motherfucking fast? I don't want it to be over. Overall, this book had me trembling, gasping for oxygen, sweating through my hairline, weak in the motherfucking knees and pinned down to the ground. You need to seek help because this sounds like a medical condition. I am worried for you. I had so much fun reading this. It had my attention from cover to cover. Ain't no one doing it out here like Queen Allie Hazelwood. Allie deserves the world for birthing this. She fucking delivered from front to the back. Wait, what? Wait, she fucking delivered. She deserves to get her kitty cat meow meow eaten out from the front to the back, up and down, side to side, in and around. I hate y'all. She deserves the world. This is yet another book that hit me from the back, ate me out, and gave me a kiss on the forehead. Let's go. Okay, this person is obviously really in need of real life something. I gotta go. I gotta exit. No, that was absolutely one of the worst reviews I've ever read in my life, and I'm very upset that I clicked on it. That was fuckery at its highest like what what is going on okay i'm gonna find one more while i'm seeing so many people i really thought had legitimate opinions rate this five stars and i'm basically canceling all of you i'm done with all of you okay i'm gonna read this one it is impossible and downright horrible for this book to get anything under a five star rating skull emoji it's so fucking good and i'm in such a hangover now i literally do not know what to do with myself read a better book it's called sweet hand thank you start to finish holy shit your hook line and sinker baby not one dry page here that's funny because every goddamn page in this book was dry what is wrong with y'all what are y'all we did not read we didn't read we did not read the same book. It's impossible. It's impossible. Impossible. <sighs> um, Adam is one of the most wholesome characters I've ever read. Is this the first book you ever read? Jesus Christ. I'm so in love with this man. And all of my dedication to these two is downright unhealthy. There you are correct. It is unhealthy because they have the personality of my post-it notes, but not even because these are pink and they're the beige ones. I'll ride hard for this book forever. It goes down as one of my top reads this year. So many great things about this book. The banter, the spice. What spice? It's like saying mayonnaise is spicy. What spice? It actually is like 10 after midnight in my neighbor. We share a wall, so I probably should be quiet, but I'm very annoyed at these reviews. Sorry, neighbor. I hope they're not in that room. The friendships sucked. Adam being scared of needles, Olive wrangling out an ice cream sandwich from him. Is that all we, is that all we need in a romance? Him letting her. Women in science. It's actually in all caps, but I don't care. I was a wee 
be scared that the science talk would confuse me because science is definitely not my strongest subject but easy peasy I'm just obsessed rightfully so this book is phenomenal and I really really need an Adam POV that epilogue was amazing. The layout of the book is amazing. I'm thrilled about this. Holy crap. What else can I say to convince you? Absolutely top notch. Pack of lies. Pack of lies. The banter, mediocre. There is no spice. There's not even pepper. Okay, there's barely salt. There's no flavor at all. Okay, the friendships, her best friend sucks. She's an annoying, pushy bitch. Um, Adam being scared of needles. Is that is that what you look for in your romance stories? Like I'm really, I'm really concerned about y'all and I'm gonna have to move on. I could keep doing this for just this book because something's wrong with y'all. But anyway, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Okay, second one, what do you think we're gonna pick? Um, You know, it's gonna be popular. Popular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. popular a court of silver flames by sarah janet mass i again gave this book two stars it probably deserves one but i guess i was feeling generous i don't know jessica here you are again with a five star but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna skip past you though i'm gonna skip past you this time questionable taste oh no that's way too long with too many goddamn gifts you doing the most <sighs> oh my god all right, people are really out here writing dissertations on this book and I don't have time to do that. I need a paragraph. What is, what are y'all doing? Uh, these are so long. Uh, I can't be reading all this. It'll make a bitch thirsty. Everyone I click on is an essay. Why are y'all doing this to me? Can I just get like a nice paragraph? A Court of Silver Flames is an ambitious continuation of Mass's wildly popular series, this time gifting readers with the story of Cassian and Nesta, two beloved characters fans have been clamoring for. Nesta? This is no side project or companion read. This novel is fully realized, deeply sexy, and spectacularly propulsive. How Mass produces such singularly brilliant works one after another is astounding. Like Stephen King, Nora Roberts, Rick Riordan, and other masters, Mass transcends her genre, becoming foundational to every bookshelf. No longer do people ask whether someone has read her, they ask which book started it all for them. You have got to be kidding me. Is Is this real? I want I'm convinced that everyone is fucking trolling me and it's not funny. Like Stephen King, Nora Roberts and Rick Riordan becoming foundational to every bookshelf. Now, come on now. Come. Every bookshelf. Two beloved characters fans have been clamoring for. What fans? Whom? Whomst? I, you know, I'm done with you. You're canceled. I hate it here. Let's move on. Monty? Monty. This is by far and away my favorite mass book that mass has penned and will in all likelihood remain that way. Is this an episode of Black Mirror? Sure, that's due in part to the fact that I love Nessa as a character and might be biased, but I think there was something enjoyable about getting to spend this much time in the world and get a full arc out of it. I'm open to conversations about it being overly long. There were elements that could have been edited out, but at the end of 751 pages, I enjoyed all of them. I think I'm gonna be sick. I don't think I can finish this review. Wow, Monty, you really let me down. Um. Wow. 
I love Nesta. I loved Cassian more here in ways that I think other readers might have always done. I love new additions to the cast, Amory and Gwen and the contributions they gave to the story. Clearly it's not going to be for everyone but this is some of Sarah's best writing and I'm going to be forever obsessed with this book. I am unwell. I am unwell. I... Monty. I'm gonna forget. I, I'm gonna pretend like I didn't see that. I'm just going to scroll. I'm gonna pretend. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Mm. Okay. Another excellent tale in a Court of Roses and Thorns series. Isn't it a Court of Thorns? What out here? This is one of my all time favorite series, and it's because not only is Sarah Mass. Wow, that seems really weird to hear just Sarah Mass. One hell of a storyteller, but the characters are fabulous, full of flaws, angst, and passion that draws you in from beginning to end, and I'm always left wanting more. I'm so glad that Nesta and Cassian got this book. Their story has been building for a while. Has it? And and I knew once they got their book that all hell was gonna break loose. With two such strong people you knew fireworks were gonna start and the sexual banter and trying to one-up each other was very entertaining and their chemistry combustible and the sex was breathtaking with many steamy and hot interludes but it was their moments of bonding and the deep understanding of each other that was the real story here. There, there's a lot going on behind the scenes with uh, a pending war. What does that mean? Impending war? And the birth of a baby that could either be a new beginning or a tragic ending. And with whispers that the human queens are plotting behind their backs and not knowing if alliances are real or just leading our heroes in the night court into a trap. Everyone's on edge and only time will tell. Nesta isn't everyone's cup of tea but she has been one of my favorites and Cassian is such a dark hero with a heart and soul of a true warrior and I adore them. And if I'm ever stuck in a house like the House of Wind where the only way out is to walk down 10,000 steps I hope it has the same benevolent spirit who leaves smutty dirty romances for me. That's a dream come true and we get along just fine. Can't wait for the next book in the series. Until next time loves. I mean, I guess I have to appreciate these what y'all what y'all are making up in these reviews, but like y'all are really reaching like sexual banter, like uh chemistry combustible and the sex was breathtaking. Was it? Or was it just a lot of freaking bouncing on top of each other and jerking off? I don't know if I'd call that breathtaking. It wasn't like some super romantic, steamy, passionate lovemaking. No. Sarah Mass doesn't sound correct. Sarah Janet Mass is one hell of a storyteller. I mean, I guess. I guess. But I'm just confused on steamy, passionate. I really want to know. We need to have a conversation in this book community about levels of like what we think is really good written sex on page and like what actually is spicy because I think some of y'all are confused. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. This is already at 21 minutes and I'm hungry. I need to eat some cookies or something or like some ice cream. So my last one that I'm gonna do is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Galaxy Stern, I, why couldn't her name just be Alex? Alexandra. Why is her name Galaxy? It's it's absolutely the worst. Okay. No, Saba. Someone said Lee Bardugo is synonymous with five stars as far as I'm concerned. So believe the hype. It's real. It's here. And it's very adult. Okay, if adults just being fucking gross as shit. Sure. Alex Stern is doing Slytherin proud. The hot trend for 2019 is snakes on covers and it makes me wish I was a Slytherin. Their brand culture is thriving. Five stars. Get it together. Okay, another five star. This says, there were always excuses for why girls died. I'm gonna review this carefully for all of you who are too cool or too civilized to run for copies at BEA and have to wait for October to grab a copy. Me, I regret nothing. When I first heard about this book, there was only a little teaser of a synopsis available. And when I finally got my hands on it, I didn't revisit it or read anything printed on the arc. I just dove in blind. 
let's just say I was unprepared for what this was. So was I 500 pages of bore. I'd assume from having read all Bardugo's books before this that this would be set in some fantasy realm which roughly correlated to real world locations but was entirely fresh and new and magical. So imagine my surprise to read about this girl kicking it in New Haven and eating Mamun's falafel. Mind blown. I mean I guess it doesn't take a lot for you your mind to be blown. Those of you who are better about reading what a book is about before you hunker down between his covers will be less surprised since it's pretty clearly states it takes place at Yale but it took me a minute to recalibrate my expectations. Not unpleasantly slow so by any means Bardugo's first adult novel is spectacular. No and it is emphatically modern all of his themes of class and race and gender not well discussed you try to do too much. All of the female rage and elitist entitlement and Alex Stern my new favorite character who doesn't have a personality teetering on that knife's edge of the heroine anti heroine divide. Never fear there's plenty of fantasy and magic and all the brilliance one expects from a Bardugal novel. No. And damn does it have teeth. And then there's a quote from the book I won't read it. It's a mystery horror fantasy cocktail that packs a serious punch. It is fierce. It is ferocious. It's all sinuous with iridescent scales and fangs. It ends on a promise of more to come and I need there to be more coming because I am smitten with Alex Stern. I will keep company with her any day of the week if she'll have me. And easy five stars. <laughs> Y'all just be lying. Lee Bardugo tried to do too much in Ninth House and it was so pretentious in his writing. Like we get it girl you went to Yale. Spare us okay. Uh Wow. Fierce, ferocious, packs a serious punch. I really don't know what what punch like. Okay, here's another one. I prayed this would be good. I was a big fan of her fantasy heist, but I was not so much a fan of the YA love interest stuff. So when I learned she was writing an adult modern, adult modern something you have fantasy with major mystery elements. I have cringe half fell over in anticipation. Oh my. When I finally read the first couple dozen pages, I relaxed. The next dozen thrilled me. I couldn't have been happier. What's so special? The research. This is more than just world building. This is our real world secret society stuff. Skull and bones, scroll and key. All those powerful people in our society that go through these special doors that all presidents seem to be a member of. The powerful of all stripes. Research is important. Research isn't research is important. But like, I don't need to know the ins and outs of the entire town of New Haven. Okay, I could draw you a map. I don't need to know that much information. We know Lee, you went to Yale. My fucking God, do you have to shove it down our throats for us regular people who just went to a regular college and just have regular people fucking student loan debt? Okay, we didn't go to our Ivy League. We get it, you did. Oh, what's so special? The research. This is more, okay, I already read that. Bardugo connects it all to magic, real magic, and turns it all into a full, what does UF stand for? Urban fantasy? Urban fantasy, world building, extravaganza. Sitting alongside Yale and the rest of the world, but the action here is all at Yale. If that wasn't enough, the titular character, Alex Stern, sees ghosts. Lots of ghosts. It gives her an edge over most of the magic students because she doesn't need special drugs to see them. She wants justice. She wants to find out who's murdering all the girls. She can't really afford Yale and the ones who employ her might just consider her staff among all the elites who really belong but she's getting her education and finding out the truth. It has to be enough. Is she getting her education though because I swear that bitch never goes to class. But she's at Yale. Sound like a good murder mystery? It isn't. They said it is. <laughs> Very good. The only thing I could make it better fantastically what? The only thing that could make it better is fantastically de detailed characters and guess what? They are not. I really fell into the tale and love getting to know so many deeply. When some other bad stuff happened, I admit I freaked out. That's what being invested in a great tale is all about. I really can't wait for more. This series is going to be on my read immediate list from now on.
This person said, wow, leave our Dugo. You have dark, hidden depths that you haven't revealed to us before. Perhaps you are the reincarnation of the Darkling? This book was magnificent. It was dark. It was gritty. It was hard. It was magical. It was rough. It was deep. It was powerful. It was good. All right. It was terrible. I hate everyone. I'm sorry. I don't hate anyone. And you're obviously valid in having your uh, Zoraida. You're obviously valid in having your opinions, but just know that you can be loud and wrong. That's your right also. Um, I gave all of these looks I mentioned two stars. They probably all deserve one. Um, ninth House was a pretentious overwritten drag. But this is at 31 minutes. That's too long. I hope this was fun for you. Um, I need to go drink some water and eat a brownie um, and listen to some more Adele and probably cry. So I hope you had fun. <laughs> Again, this is freaking fun. Don't get all in your goddamn feelings, okay? So let's say a thank you to my patrons because this was their idea. And um, I kind of got this idea because I saw Mayana do it. I think she did one star reviews of her favorite books. Um, people do this all the time, but she did it while being like tipsy. And then I also feel like I saw recently books with Emily Fox did this. So it's not like this is an original idea, but it's fun. Um, I hope more people do it. But thank you, babies, besties, Lisa, Hannah, Brina, Kayla, Jamie, Rayner, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizabeth, Amber, Celine, Maria, and Serena, and to Nigel, Lavandria, Stan, Brianna, Katrina, Rosie, Ava, Clary, <laughs> Ava, Claire, Carrie, Damari, and Rainy. Thank you. Thank you to you all who watch and support the channel. It's been a year. It's been a year. Um, I thank you all so much. Can you give this video a thumbs up? And, um, that's a like. Like, <laughs> uh, subscribe. Ways to support my channel in the description bar. Um, thank you for watching. Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.